Well, I'd like to explore this trigonometric identity dealing with sine of theta plus a sine beta and how that expands into an infinite summation. Let's return to the original FM equation. And you'll notice something interesting here. We see that the first term associated with our carrier frequency links up with theta. We see that modulation index corresponds to A. And we see that the term associated with our modulation frequency corresponds to beta. Incidentally, if you're very observant in the pink equation, I should have had a closing right parentheses on the whole thing. You can imagine that that's there. So we now have a correspondence. Theta corresponds to our, our carrier frequency. Beta is the modulation frequency. A corresponds to I. Now the modula or the Bessel function, J, dictates the amplitude of each one of these spectral components. So we see there's an amplitude for the component based on the carrier, and then we see that there's a whole series of different amplitudes for what are called the sidebands. We also see that the amplitude of the sidebands inside the square brackets is either 1, or we see there's a variation due to the minus 1 to the k that gives amplitudes of plus and minus 1. So the Bessel functions control the amplitude of the sidebands. And that will be discussed more completely in a separate video from this one. What I'd like to do here is focus on how these sidebands are actually arranged as spectral components. So we see sine of theta. So that means we have a component at FC. And I'll just draw all of these with essentially a unit amplitude. On negative side, we would have the corresponding negative spectral component. Here we have theta, so that's FC, plus K beta. So that would say that we have an integer multiple of our modulation frequency being added to FC. Let me actually focus on this one, the theta plus k beta. So if we say that k equals 1, that would give us theta plus beta, or uh, fc plus fm. And that's the position of that spectral component. Over here we have theta minus beta, so that's uh, on the other side. We then also have this multiplier, and since k is 1, or an odd value, that means that this spectral component is negative. So I'll just draw that as negative 1. And again, we would have our corresponding spectral components on the negative frequency side as well. All right, let's try this for k equals 2 we would have FC plus twice FM. And then we also have FC minus twice F sub M. Now since K is two, then that uh, scale factor is simply plus one. And again, we have the, the replication on the negative side as well. Let's try one more for k is 3. And you get the idea. The interesting thing about this is since the summation is infinite in extent, that says we have spectral components in theory going all the way to plus infinity, all the way to minus infinity, and in fact, since the negative components also have the same extent to plus and minus infinity, they will actually um, intrude into the positive side as well. And that we can kind of think of that as an aliasing type of phenomenon.